Mission Affliction. Hello. It's time to wet a line. It's Fishing Affliction time. For those who got it bad. Well, mom and dad's grabbed the kids, it's time for the fishing show. Me and the big dog's gonna go catch them down at the fishing hole. Well, you better stick around, cause you don't know what you're missing. Yeah, me and the big dog's got that fishing affliction. Grab your hats, grab your baits, don't forget your poles. We're gonna fire up that old ranger boat and head to the fishing hole. We're gonna try to catch a biggin'. Yeah, that's what we're wishing Cause me and the big dog's got that fishing affliction Yeah, me and the big dog's got that fishing affliction <laughs> Yeah, and we've got it bad I've got that fishing affliction Just like me here, fishy, fishy here, fishy, fishy here, fishy, fishy here. Well, who are you sitting on the couch with, Big Dog? I'm sitting on the, the couch with a fishing le legend. His name is Jimmy Houston. <laughs> Good to How see you, bro. This is Doc. Doing great, man. Doing great. It's time to wet a line. It's Fishing Affliction time. And thanks for joining us today. This is your old pal, Matthew Gillen, the voice of Fishing Affliction here at the HD Studios. A milestone on this episode today as we celebrate our 100th episode of Fishing Affliction TV with a very special sit down visit with America's favorite fisherman, legendary Jimmy Houston. We'll have a sponsor product spotlight on Stay In Charge Systems and a little preview of the vertical jigging with the big dog, Rusty Rust, and pro staffer Mickey Beck over on Percy Priest Lake. Plus, Dan will unveil the very first inductees into the Fish and Affliction Hall of Honor to wrap up the show. Be sure to surf on into the exclusive online store at fishandaffliction.com. You can check out our video archives anytime on YouTube and our featured Team Fish and Affliction Facebook Friend of the Week is coming up at the end of the show. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our 100th episode featuring a visit with America's favorite fisherman, Jimmy Houston, is on Fish and Affliction TV. I fished my first tournament when I, when I was a, a, a senior in college in 1966, first tournament I ever fished. And I went down and fished a, uh, an old tournament, I don't know if it, what it was, it was uh, you know, before BASS, because they didn't start till 67, some sort of a tournament on, on Lake Sam Rayburn, a guy named John Fox, he used to have a television mm -hmm. show yeah, called The American Angler, and John is still alive, his wife Ruby has died, but John's still alive and lives in Florida, I talk to him all the time, he's, uh, you know, he just still fishes and still a very, very good fisherman. But, but he walked up to me at that tournament, and uh, you know, I was just a, a kid just out of college, and gave me a handful of Mr. Twister worms. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time I'd seen a, a, all we had back then was cream worms. Here was a worm that had a little curly tail on it. I mean, that is such a old time deal. Mont no seal probably don't even remember anything that far back, but he gave me this handful of worms. And he said, this is Mr. Twister worms. First time anybody had ever given me anything free to fish with that I didn't have to go down to the Bass Pro Shop or somewhere and buy. And, uh, and I took those worms and caught fish on them, but I took them back home and gave a, two or three worms to all my buddies. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of, that was sort of how tournament promotion and bass tournament fishing started where the, the early promotion was where somebody would take a, like you said, a new technique and you took that technique that you had learned down in Florida and brought it back here and used it and shared it with some of your buddies and that's how it all exploded. And that's, that's what, you know, promotion in, in fishing, really, that's, that's how it all started really was just guys sharing techniques and sharing lures and, and sharing ideas and then going back to their home and sharing with their buddies and all of a sudden I mean everybody all around the nation would know something new and some exciting way to catch a fish. Well you know the really the uh, history of bass fishing isn't all that old I mean what was it it was like 67 I think when uh, when uh, Ray Scott had the first BASS event Speaking for like yourself that. that's nearly 50 years ago. <laughs> But I mean, you know, as as far as the sport, that's not. It's you know. a young sport. It, it yeah. is a young sport, and and um, I, you know, the uh, it's amazing. My buddy Scott Martin uh, Rollins, uh, boy, just won six hundred thousand in the FLW championship, and uh, there's been a couple million dollar purses, and 
and uh, I actually uh, uh, was visiting with Roland. The, the, right, I left the FLW Championship. I'd gone over and worked for Chevrolet. I'd just flown in from somewhere and worked for Chevrolet. And Roland was coming over to watch Scott weigh in that final day at that FLW Championship just a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago. And he called me and, and he said, I don't know if I can get in a building. And I got him some seats right up front. Roland Martin, I said, Roland, you can get in any building they're having a fishing tournament. And he said, well, I don't know, you know. And, and, uh, and I, I had a parking spot right by where you go in the convention center there in Hot Springs. And, and I told him, I said, how far out are you? He said, I'm five miles away. And I said, well, I'll wait right here and I'll give you my parking spot. He had flown in. Actually, Johnny Morris uh, had flown him into Little Rock in his plane. And, uh, and he had rented a car and him and Judy had gone down and, and, uh, and I, I, I told uh, Roland, I said, Scott's got this tournament won. I already know what he's caught. And, and I said, can you imagine he's going to win $600,000? And he said, you know, he said, it took you and me uh, 10 years put together to win $600,000. Uh, and that was winning tournaments, Angler of the Year titles and, and all kinds of things. And, and that's true, you know, but we saw, you know, my first BASS tournament that I won, I won $5,000. And uh, so to win any BASS tournament now is at least 100000 And to win something like the Classic or the FLW Championship. In fact, uh, to just place 50th place in an FLW tournament now is 10000 or a BASS Elite is 10000 which is twice what it, I got for winning a BASS tournament. So that's where the sports come. And, and, and then, you know, they at some point in time started calling us professional fishermen. I don't know really when they started calling us that. But uh, at some point in time, they started saying, these guys are professional fishermen. And uh, we thought, that sounds pretty cool. But, but now they really are professional fishermen. That's all people like Scott Martin, as an example, that's all they do. They don't know anything else. They don't, uh, they don't have a job like, like all the rest of it. Like when we started, and I fished that first BASS tournament that I fished, which I think it was the second tournament that Ray Scott had. Uh, at Ufall, Alabama. It might have been the third. They might have, might have had Smith Lake. You know, I can't remember if Smith Lake was right before or right after that. But, uh, but you know, we all had jobs. We all had, uh, we just uh, took a week off from work to go fish a BAS system. And you know, I got the lead in that tournament the first day. I caught 11 bass, weighed 52 pounds and 8 ounces, and got the lead in the tournament. Ended up finishing sixth place. You know how much I won for sixth place? Three hundred and fifty dollars, sixth place. Uh, isn't that amazing? But but it's come a long way, and we've got to see that happen. That's pretty cool, Rusty. It really is. Well, folks, I hope you're enjoying the one hundredth episode of Fish and Affliction TV as we sit down with a true fishing legend, America's favorite fisherman, Mr. Jimmy Houston. And in a moment, folks, we'll be right back. But right now, it's time to see some pictures from this week's in the wild. Well, folks, Mr. Ken Jenkins and I have something in common. We both love to catch smallmouths, and this one he caught here was caught on Tim's Ford, and this is Ken's son, Joseph, who landed that beautiful smallmouth on the same trip. Now, this is Mr. Kenny Allen, and that is a beautiful smallmouth that he caught while he was fishing with, you guessed it, Mr. Ken Jenkins, and both of those beautiful smallmouths came from Dale Holla. Folks, you can send your pictures to pics at fishandaffliction.com, and be sure to visit the picture galleries there at fishandaffliction.com, and maybe you'll see your pictures right here on the big screen. In the wild. Your pictures in the wild. You know, I love to fish crankbaits. I'm always looking for that edge. For years, I've looked for that special crankbait, that one that has that really unique action that really catches the fish. The 1.5 and 2.5 to me are really special. It was a hard job to build it into every one to get it that searching type erratic motion out of it, but we nailed it. You can't believe the action of these baits. The KVD 1.5 and 2.5 helped me win my third Angler of the Year title. The KVD 1.5 and 2.5, money in the bank, baby. Smyrna Ready Mix is an established company that handles business daily with integrity and professionalism. Whether you're a general contractor, professional builder, or a do-it-yourself homeowner, SRM has your concrete solutions. With several convenient locations in the Middle Tennessee area to serve you, the only call you need to make is to SRM, ready to serve you with integrity and professionalism. Overloading your boat with people or gear is dangerous. Overloaded boats or boats with unevenly distributed weight could be difficult to control, as well as more likely to swamp or capsize. The capacity plate located near the operator's position or on the transom of the boat 
indicates the maximum weight capacity, which includes people, gear, and motor. Avoid the dangers of overloading your boat by checking your boat's capacity plate, not exceeding the weight capacity, and ensuring that all weight in the boat is distributed evenly. The Turn Trail for those who've got it bad. Brought to you by SRM Smyrna Radius, serving you with professionalism and integrity. Well, folks, history has been made at Mike's Saturday morning tournament there on Percy Priest, as on January 14th, Mr. Dan Hall and Eric Grizzard weighed in the biggest largemouth that has ever been weighed in there at Mike's Saturday morning tournament. This giant weighed 9.81 pounds, and it's the biggest fish ever caught there at that tournament. Congratulations to both those guys, and yes, folks, they also won first place with 19.66 pounds. Congratulations to all those who participated, and thanks to SRM for sponsoring the tournament trail. And now back to Fish and Affliction. Welcome back to Fish and Affliction, and this segment of the show is brought to you by Clark Marine Sales in Franklin, Tennessee, offering the very best of Ranger, Triton, Sea Arc, Express, Sea Ray, Bayliner, Miranda Pontoon Boats, Centurion Tow Boats, Yamaha, and Mercury Brands. Clark Marine has been serving you with excellence for over 30 years. So for all your boating needs, see Stuart and the award-winning team at Clark Marine Sales. And you know, I got the lead in that tournament the first day. I caught 11 bass, weighed 52 pounds and 8 ounces, and got the lead in the tournament. Ended up finishing sixth place. You know how much I won for sixth place? $350, sixth place. Uh, isn't that amazing? <laughs> but, but it's come a long way, and we've got to see that happen. That's pretty cool, Rusty. It really is. Yeah, Scott was down. He was down scouting with, uh, with uh, us earlier in the year on Kentucky Lake and everything. And, and I'm going to tell you, you know, after seeing, you know, just the amount of events Roland's won and seeing his son come up through the ranks and start out, I think he started out as a non boater in FLW. He did. That's exactly how he started. You know, and then. You know, even with his daddy being as good as he was, he wanted to get in there. You know, I've talked to him about it a little bit, and he wanted to get in there and, you know, just see other people's techniques and how they work. You know, like I know you're a you're a, you're a great spinnerbait fisherman, you know, but but it tends to follow you. Like a lot of people think I'm a really good flipper, but but I do a lot of other stuff too, and you do too, I'm sure. You know, and it just. Yeah. Well, to, to get to that uh, top level, the, the top level in, 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 in bass fishing, there are two major organizations that has a top level. FLW allows 150 people to play or 160, BASS allows 100 to play at that top level. To get to that level, you better be good at everything. You have to be good at, at every kind of technique there is. And not only that, you have to be very, very innovative in locating fish. And, because uh, again, it's the cream of the crop. It's uh, you know we got football season just coming right now, and, and everybody talks about the the difference when you change levels from a great high school player to a college player, then from a college player to an NFL player. When you change levels in fishing, uh, it may, is a huge difference, just like it is in any other sport. And when you get to the top, you are talking about the, you know, like BASS calls there's the elite. You are getting to the elite fishermen, and at the top level in, in FLW. And, and I fish both, and a lot of, most of the guys have fished both at the tour or the major level now at, at, at FLW or the elite level at BASS. There's not any difference. You fish with guys in both of those organizations at that top level. And, at the top level, it's the top level. They're really, really good, and they're and those guys are interchangeable. They if they would change from BASS to FLW, they're still going to be up at the top. Change from FLW to BASS, still going to be up there at the top. And and uh, the, the, you know, I am so impressed with the, with the fishing ability of the fishermen nowadays. It's uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, we we have tournaments now. It's only a five bass limit. When we started, it was a fifteen bass limit. And then ten, and then seven. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I am so impressed that these guys. You drop them on a lake anywhere, and like in the FLW now, we've got 160 guys. 130 of them will catch a limit uh, out of the 160. And, well, and, and 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 you know I, at Okeechobee this year, uh, the first day I catch 19, 12, I think 19 pounds, 12 ounces on five fish, 63rd place. 
<laughs> you know, unbelievable, you know. So uh, they're just really good. They're talented, talented. Well, I remember going in 04 was the last year I fished FLW. And we were on Champlain, and that's a, it's one of the, the, the best smallmouth fisheries on the, on the, yeah. on the trail. So, so we get to Champlain, and I'm catching 14, 15 pounds of smallmouth a day, and I'm thinking, man, I'm going to be a nice be fish. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, I think out of the full field, there was two people that did not catch a limit. And if you had under, 17 and a half pounds you weren't even close to the cut so i mean yeah, that's how good the bite was but what was blowing me away was how good the guys got on fish and this was water you could see a penny in 10 foot 10 foot deep it's crystal clear water how good they got on the bite how good they fished around each other and still made their their stringer weights and everything yeah but, it's incredible skills i mean mm -hmm. incredible skills you know and uh, it's just a it's just the game's come a long way. That's all there is to it. The game's come a long way. Well, I used to, uh, I used to uh, room with a guy named uh, Kelly Jordan, who's come a long well, way. Well, Kelly's an outstanding fisherman. Yeah, and uh, I remember starting out the first of the year. We would start the first of the year, and and uh, I was only fishing part of the FLW as I mentioned. He was fishing both trails, and I would see his schedule for six months. He would have three days. He would actually go to the house. Yeah. I mean, the rest of the time he was going. From here to here to whatever, and it's really if you're a young tournament fisherman coming out, you've got to know you're going to dedicate those kind of hours because it's really when you first start a gypsy lifestyle. And the one other thing that people don't realize is like uh, the guys that do have kids are homeschooling their kids a lot, or like Dion will make sure he stays over here because jay's kids are over here and they want their kids to play together yeah. and there's a lot more planning to it than a lot of people think Pro professional fishing is not a 40 hour a week job is it no <laughs> well folks it's not every day you get to celebrate your 100th episode and visit with a true fishing legend who happens to be america's favorite fisherman mr jimmy houston and folks in a moment we'll be back with more of this visit and we're also going to give you a little sneak preview of some vertical jigging action there on percy priest with the big dog and mickey beck and then, folks, as a special celebration of our 100th episode, we are going to unveil the Fish and Affliction Sportsman's Hall of Honor and the very first class of inductees. All that when we get back, folks. But right now, it's time to hear from the voice of Fish and Affliction, Mr. Matthew Gillen, as he tells us about the weekly Team Fish and Affliction special from Clark Marine. Okay, here we go with the 1998 Skeeter SS140. It has a Yamaha 115 engine. Features an Eagle Fish Easy, also has a Motor Guide 41 and the Dual Pro Sportsman Edition Charger. Call now for special pricing or cruise on in and see Stewart and the award winning team at Clark Marine Sales, Paytonsville Road, exit 61 off I 65, Franklin, Tennessee. Now let's head upstairs to the kitchen, see what Miss Vick's got cooking this week. In the Skillet with Chef Vicki Porter is brought to you by Kleepy.com, turning your precious memories into video treasures. Welcome to In the Skillet. I'm Vicki Porter, and today I have a delicious bruschetta chicken casserole for you. And now for the ingredients. You will need boneless chicken breast, diced tomatoes with Italian seasoning, minced garlic, chicken flavored stuffing mix, mozzarella cheese, salt and pepper, balsamic vinegar, basil, olive oil, oregano, and water. In a greased baking dish, add your chicken. Now season it with salt and pepper. In a mixing bowl, we're gonna mix together our diced tomatoes, our minced garlic, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, our stuffing mix, and add about a half a cup of water Get this all mixed together and sit it aside to let it soften. Now it's time to add some oregano to our chicken and now some basil. Now cover it with mozzarella cheese. Now spread your stuffing mixture on top of your chicken and bake this uncovered at 400 for about 30 minutes. After this is done cooking, sit down and enjoy a little taste of Italy. You can find this recipe at intheskillet.com. And be sure and click on the YouTube icon to see this video as well as all of my other In the Skillets. 
I'm Vicki Porter. Tune in next week to see what's cooking in the skillet. It's a small sign of spring for me because now applications are out for quota turkey hunts on wildlife management areas. That's a mouthful, but if you want to maybe pick up an extra bird or two this year, along with your statewide quota for turkeys, you can apply to hunt on certain wildlife management areas. You need to go to tnwildlife.org and all the information is out there. That's where you'll apply for them now online. Go do that and maybe you'll get an extra bird this year. And don't forget that guide you got way back in the deer season, it's also got the spring turkey hunt in it. So don't throw it away, hold on to it, and it will tell you the rules and regulations for this coming spring hunt. See you next week right here on Fish and Affliction. Folks, on today's Fish and Affliction product spotlight, I would like to tell you about the incredible charging system from Stay In Charge. This is what Fish and Affliction TV uses to charge each and every one of our deck of batteries, whether we're in the garage with our boats doing nothing, or driving down the road on the way to the chute, or even on the water. Our stay in charge systems keep our batteries absolutely maxed to the highest level, and they are extremely friendly to every type of battery, whether it's an acid battery, a gel battery, a stay in charge system in your boat will keep your batteries charged to the max. So get on over to stay in charge, check them out, and now, Back to Fish and Affliction. Welcome back to Fish and Affliction, and this segment of the show is brought to you by U.S. Reel, when performance means everything. Harris Rods, don't follow, lead. Cigar Line, always the best. Must add Ultra Point Hooks, stays sharper longer. Onyx Life Jackets, keeping you there. Fraybill, trusted gear since 1938. Blakemore's Real Magic, the name says it all. Deca Gel Batteries, Stay in Charge Battery Charging Systems, Rugged Electronic Mounts provided by Ram Mounts, Lawrence Electronics by BBGMarine.com, and Tournament Wear. Look great, feel great, do great. Jimmy, I know you're on US Reels uh, team, and we just started there about six months ago, and I've really been impressed with the, with the Reel. Um, in fact, it's probably the best flipping reel I've ever stuck in my hand. Well, we, we've been using U.S. reel now for, for two, two years, and uh, I used a Shimano for over 30 years, you know. I, I obviously, a great, great product and, and a very, very popular product in the marketplace and, and a good quality product, but I've been using U.S. reel for two years now. Unbelievable product. Uh, the innovation that, that U.S. reel has put in the marketplace has, has been the, the greatest changes in innovation, both casting reels and spinning reels that we've had in, in years and years in, in, in fishing reels. Well, folks, I hope you're enjoying our visit with America's favorite fisherman, fishing legend Jimmy Houston. And as they're sitting there talking about those awesome U.S. reels, I want to give you a sneak preview of a future episode or two of Fish and Affliction TV when the big dog and Affliction pro staffer Mickey Beck get vertical on Percy Priest in 30-mile-an-hour winds. i got to use a spray field net to get him in. He's got some of them good solid ones in it, don't It's got a bunch of good hybrid in Now that's the difference in a, you can see how short the body is and how the lighter lines broke up, and that's how you tell the hybrids, you know. And they're more, more of a football. Yeah, more of a football. More of a football, and the, the rockfish be long and slender. Yeah. Folks, all of us here at Fish and Affliction TV want to thank each and every one of you who join us every week here on Channel 5 Plus for a Fish and Affliction weekend for making Fish and Affliction reach its 100th episode. Thanks so very much. And as a special celebration, folks, we would like to now unveil the Fish and Affliction Sportsman's Hall of Honor. 
This Hall of Honor is designed to recognize the many men and women for their outstanding achievement, continued support, significant contribution, loyal dedication, responsible conservation, continued education, and consistent promotion of America's wildlife resources, sporting and recreational opportunities, and for sharing God's great outdoors. And folks, without further ado, we present to you the Fish and Affliction Sportsman's Hall of Honor and the very first inductees. And the very first inductee, folks, is the true Tennessee outdoorsman, Mr. Jimmy Holt. For over 30 years, Mr. Holt hosted one of the most popular shows that's ever aired in Tennessee, a true pioneer of Southern Outdoors television. And folks, he didn't host it alone, as our second inductee is Mr. Glenn Smith, who co-hosted the Tennessee Outdoorsman with Mr. Holt for many of those 33 years. And folks, we recently lost the next two inductees, Mr. Bill Hall, who entertained us for so many years with the Outdoors with Bill Hall show, an extremely giving and engaging engaging personality, and also Mr. Daniel Pollard, who began working with the TWRA in 1984 as a Creole clerk, who recently passed away at the age of 48. And folks, last but not least, the true Tennessee legends, the Trout Warriors. This collection of war veterans from World War II all the way through the Vietnam War, Mr. Walter Coote, Ed Lane, George Huff, John Yambrick, and Jerry Bishop are some of the most inspirational folks that you'll ever meet, and they are absolutely true American heroes. Congratulations to all the inductees, and folks, I urge you to go to fishandaffliction.com and visit the Sportsman's Hall of Honor so you can learn more about all these wonderful inductees. Congratulations to the inductees and the families of those inductees. And folks, the Fish and Affliction Sportsman's Hall of Honor is designed for you to nominate those who you believe belong in this hall. We believe there are so many men and women that have given to so many of us and influenced so many of us in a positive direction in regards to enjoying God's great outdoors. And this is our way of recognizing their contributions and their efforts. And folks, all you have to do to nominate someone is go to our website, fishandaffliction.com, and on the homepage you'll see the Fish and Affliction Sportsman's Hall of Honor. Click on that and it will take you to the right place on the web so you can follow the procedure to nominate those who you believe belong in the hall. And folks, we trust that if you nominate them, then they belong. So we're going to put them in. And about once a month, we'll be putting new inductees into the Fish and Affliction Sportsman's Hall of Honor. We can't wait to be putting those folks in there. Thank you for tuning in to Fish and Affliction TV this week and celebrating our 100th episode with us. We sincerely appreciate each and every one of you and the time that you give to us. And folks, next week we are going to continue our visit with America's favorite fisherman, Mr. Jimmy Houston, and watch the big dog and Affliction Pro Staffer, Mickey Beck, out there on Percy Priest doing some more vertical jigging. And you're also going to get to see the very first Fish and Affliction fish tale, a story that's been shared with us that we want to share with you. And we are looking forward to getting your story so we can share them with the many fans of Fish and Affliction TV. We believe that you're going to enjoy this new monthly feature, the Fish and Affliction Fishtail. So tune in to Fish and Affliction TV next week and you'll see. Folks, it's time for a Fish and Affliction Fishtail. Well, folks, today's Fishtail comes to us from Mr. Thomas Roden and he writes... This week's Team Fish and Affliction featured Facebook friend is Diane Fairchild. And thanks for being our Facebook friend. For your chance to join in the fun and become an official Team Fish and Affliction featured Facebook friend, simply like us on Facebook. And be sure to write a comment on our wall. As always, a big thank you to all of our national and local sponsors for providing us with the most advanced technology and highest quality products and services. Be sure to visit each of our partners online through the sponsor links page on our official website at fishandaffliction.com. And this is your old pal Matthew Gillen, the voice of Fish and Affliction TV, hoping that you'll tune in next week because there's no doubt that Dan and the Big Dog got it bad. They've got Vision Affliction for those who got it bad. People don't know, but these things will talk to you. They say, I love Fish and Affliction. Yes, I do. And he's saying, don't throw them strike team baits around me no more.